Don't trust anybody. Better than food, man. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Bed and Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Clifford Lee Sargent. Great to see you as always. Hope you're doing well. Get that coffee. All right. I can't wear like any of my normal clothes here in Florida because it's too hot. So I gotta go buy new clothing. I don't have any money for new clothing, man. Come on. Come on, man. How's it going? Good to see you. Today is Mariano Azuela's The Underdogs, Los de Bajo, or like those from below, like those from the lower classes. Published in 1915, a novel of the Mexican Revolution, as it states here on the cover. With a new translation by uh, Sergio Weisman, or Weisman, with a foreword by Carlos Fuentes, who wrote The Old Gringo and many others. The Mexican author Mariano Azuela was an impressive guy. Born in Jalisco, he was a doctor as well as an author, and worked in the revolution when it happened, and had 10 kids. Wow. An unambitious guy, he was not. So I believe this is considered the novel of the Mexican Revolution. It's a fictional tale of a bunch of members of the lower class banding together to fight on the side of Pancho Villa and the revolution. But this part's very important. Not alongside him, but for him, in theory. I didn't know much about the revolution before reading this book, but I'm very interested in it, you know? Uh, I had read uh, The Old Gringo by Carlos Fuentes and reviewed that a while ago, but uh, which is all about Ambrose Bierce, you know, basically uh, committing suicide by going to fight in the revolution in his 70s. It's an interesting book. But yeah, I didn't know much about it when I started reading this and uh, <laughs> I feel like there's still, uh, I feel like I still don't know anything about it. There's so much that happened in that span of time. In the period of history called the Mexican Revolution, it's baffling. Even after researching it, it's very difficult to keep track of it all. But for those of you who don't know the main events, let me give you a brief summary. But first, really quick, today's video is sponsored by the sleek, sexy, and always reliable Ridge Wallet. These things are awesome. They are light, industrial, beautiful little pieces of modern minimalist design. Holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash on the back. This one has a cash strap. They also come with a cash clip. You can change them out if you like. It's really awesome. This is the Forged Ember model. Check that out. The durable material means that each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You can buy this one wallet and carry it for life. Plus, it looks like you have your shit together, because you do, and you look snazzy. Snazzy. In fact, the Rich team is so confident that you'll like this wallet that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. And my friend, you're going to love it. It also has RFID blocking technology to protect you and your wallet from digital pickpockets. Can't be too careful these days. The fucks. Get 10% off your order today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash better than food or by clicking on the link below. Really appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. The Mexican Revolution lasted for approximately 10 years between 1910 and 1920. It was mostly a civil war, right? Fought in Mexico with various battles in different regions across the country. It's completely chaotic. But because there were so many outside investors in Mexican land, like I believe that like 25% of Mexico's land at the time, at the beginning of the revolution, was actually owned by outside like foreign investors. There was some interesting involvement of other countries. In particular, as one could guess, the United States. Okay, so 1910. You have this guy named Porfirio Diaz, a Mexican dictator, basically. Uh, a guy who was elected and uh, decided that there's going to be, you know, uh, nobody else after him. He's going to just stay there. Kind of like Putin, right? Like maybe there's an election for show, but it's like, He's gonna just stay there for as long as he likes. So along comes this guy from the upper class from one of the richest families in Northern Mexico, uh, Francisco Madero. He was a landowner who ran against Diaz in the elections and eventually ignited the revolution in 1910, which sent Diaz into hiding. Turned out the revolutionary army was stronger than the federal army, the federales, that's an important term. So there's this big uprising amongst the people. Something's happening. Anyway, so Madero gets in, he uh, starts uh, having disagreements with uh, the other men who are uh, leading armies in the regions. A couple years later, predictably perhaps, there's a coup. Madero is ousted by an officer of his named Victoriano Huerta, and is shortly thereafter actually murdered by him. Also, point of interest, the USA and Germany are both backing this coup. So now you have Huerta in power. But then the constitutionalist forces, as they've uh, named themselves, including Obregón and Carranza, as well as Zapata and Pancho Villa from the south and north, respectively, join forces and overthrow Huerta. So this story, the story of this marauding band of um, revolutionaries, takes place during the fall of Huerta's dictatorship in 1914. So, all right, I think we've got the, you know, the exposition here. We know what's going on. Our main character is a man named Demetrio Macias, a rural countryman who lives with his wife and newborn, 
and whose house is set on fire one night by the Federales, the, uh, the government army. Nobody's killed though except his dog, tragically. So he separates from his wife and child that night. And uh, so, you know, they literally go one way, his wife and child off into the night, and he goes the other way. And he sleeps in the hills and then he reunites with this gang of revolutionaries who he leads through the country battling said Federales. They're fighting under the banner of Pancho Villa, or so it seems. The truth is, they're just fighting by the end of it, you know? That's all there is, fighting. And ultimately, Demetrio has no idea why. I would just like to inform you as a shameless bastard that I had these bookmarks for sale. I'm happy to sign them if you like. They're $4 each plus shipping, which is 75 cents in the US, or if you're outside, $1.41 or something like that. Inflation, I don't know, these days. So if you would like my mustachioed face guilt tripping you every time you open your book, now's your chance. Just hit me up via the email below or DM me on Instagram and I'll be happy to send a quote. Thanks a bunch. Also, I have a new mailing address, which you can find below. If you'd like to send me a book, I'd sincerely appreciate it. I'm always happy to accept gifts. And also, these mugs are for sale, link below. So you know, really it's a story of this like gang, this marauding gang of banditos or, uh, or I mean, thugs essentially, of varying degrees of sanity and sadism. They all have nicknames. There's Quail, Lard, Toehead Margarito, the idealist Luis Cervantes, nicknamed Curro, which is a derogatory term that means like a, like a wealthy bourgeois snob who looks down on the poor. Uh, it's kind of ironic because he joined the revolution after abandoning the other side and they nearly kill him before letting him join. And a fiery gal named La Pintada, or in English, War Paint, who is kind of the sometimes girlfriend of the leader Demetrio. Upon reflection for me, actually, La Pintada is the most interesting character because she possesses a depth that the others don't seem to. She actually changes, she, sh she sort of reveals something. There's a little bit more complexity to her than the others. You see, women had an interesting role in the revolution. They took up arms, like they were fighting along with the men, and not often, but sometimes, commanded men, with some of them behaving like men, or intentionally looking more masculine to avoid getting harassed or raped. And after the war, after the revolution, some of them just kept on that way. It's interesting. There's a, there, again, there's a lot of different stuff happening at this time, a lot of different stories. Um, a lot of them that we'll never hear too. Regarding the women who were fighting who remained traditionally feminine, like uh, La Pintada, they were called soldaderas or adelitas. You know, they had the, they also had like the sombreros, right? And they had the, the bullet cartridge belts, you know, crossing their chests or, or wherever. This cover, I mean, this is what lured me in for sure. This cover, that is one of the flat out coolest covers I've ever seen on a book. So that, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good cover. But yeah, they were called Soldaderas or Adelitas. And there's a very, very famous song that I learned about in the book from the revolution called La Adelita, which I've linked to below. There's a billion different versions. Uh, the one below is my favorite that I've heard so far. One of the famous songs of the revolution, excellent song. La Cucaracha also was a, uh, a song from the revolution, but uh, I prefer this one. Adelita was a woman who became a soldier after falling in love with Madero in the beginning of the revolution. So she became the symbol of La Soldadera. La Pintada definitely has this quality. She's tough as nails. Like she's this shit kicking badass basically just as much as the other ones. And also vengeful <laughs> just as much as the other ones. Maybe more so actually. But her, her kind of vengeance is, you can kind of understand La Pintada's motivations. The other guys, uh, particularly I think Margarito, he's just like an absolute sadist. Like, you know, it, it just really devolves into these guys, you know, they'll go sack a town, basically. They'll just murder a shitload of federales and then, they'll, but then they'll just start murdering other people, like civilians, uh, just, you know, on a power trip. And they'll just start like bragging about their deaths, right? There's like this point in the book where they just all talk about like the different guys they killed and for what reason, for no reason. Like them murdering just tons of people for no reason whatsoever. Like it just becomes sort of like a pissing contest, right? Uh, it's nasty. It's meant to be nasty because I think this is sort of what Asuela saw. You see, Asuela was, you know, a doctor, a physician in the revolution under a general who was commanded by Pancho Villa. So he was there. I don't know how much he was partaking in the actual violence, but he was around it. He saw it. So the tone of the novel is one of disillusionment, right? I jaded. Like, this is not what it appears to be. This is not noble, it's not courageous, it's nasty, it's stupid, and just kind of sick. Yeah, these guys are not like intellectual idealists or like, you know, these impressive revolutionary soldiers. They're like the dude from the Treasure of the Sierra Madre with uh, Bogey, 
where these are like badges. We don't have no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. That's that's the spinning image of like these guys. Like they're that lame. Like they're that like manipulative and like two-faced and, and just shitty. Like they go sack a town and then they go to the restaurant and the place they just sacked and they harass the wait staff and uh, just abuse everybody and just start drinking and getting fucked up. Like uh, that's basically the pattern. Like at one point they take over this restaurant and they force this waiter, one of these guys forces this waiter to put a bottle on his head so he can William tell it with his pistol, right? Shoot it off of his head and he shoots off the waiter's ear, you know? Shit like that, just like abuse, like degradation. It's just this pathological slope. So the book suggests, like heavily suggests, that the revolution, while it may have been started for noble causes, quickly descends into looting and rape and murder. And if we look at the history, this is basically what happened and what always seems to happen. As soon as the going gets tough, the only thing people know under that kind of pressure is that they have to win, right? And when they know that their side is dying, they start behaving badly. They start getting vicious. They have to gain power, right? And that's what revolutions devolve into. Power grabs. Everybody's just vying for power. That's all the revolution becomes. And you see this play out time and time and time again. I don't know if it's good or bad, ultimately. I mean, you know, of course, there's the argument like, if shit sucks, if there's a dictator, you want to oust him, you want to throw him out and make things better. But when you do, it's difficult to control everything, you know? It's not a place you want to be where you have to be making decisions because those decisions have uh, enormous consequences. In many ways, it seems to be like not up to the people in power, right? Because these vacuums open. You know, I'm watching Breaking Bad right now and it's just, it's the same, it's the same thing. With, you know, with Walter White. Starts off with a noble cause, wants to make money for his family before he dies. And it just evolves into a power grab. It just needs, he needs more power, right? This is just, this is the story of the human race in a nutshell. This is what happens. Don't trust anybody. No more advice from me, that's it. So I really enjoyed that about the novel. It really made me think about all this and uh, kind of the nature of revolutions and wars and so on and so forth. You know, how cultures develop, how they come to be, uh, the end of, you know, the fall of, of empires and eras. Uh, it's exhausting. So yeah, this gang of bandits, it's, I mean, it's quickly hard to take these guys seriously. They're an incompetent gang of drunks and thieves who are just riding their luck as long as they can, exploiting people and killing without reason. One long, stale, violent party on wheels, or hooves, with a bunch of murder and destruction traveling across the Mexican landscape. They're so far from the action and, and so uneducated about what is actually happening, or so unaware at least, like just really, they, they really don't know. They're so unaware of what's going on. There's absolutely no connection with the real political events. They're not in communication with Via. They're just really get, just getting like snippets of news and updates, right? And they don't care they reach a point where it's just irrelevant. So yeah, what it descends into are petty acts of violence and sadism, right? It's really like blood meridian light. Like, I mean, it's, the atmosphere is totally solid. Like, I mean, you know, Mexican banditos, you know, against the federales in the hills of Mexico, like shooting each other, uh, people getting murdered by hanging, like, you know, the corpses out there in the dusty wilderness and the huisache trees and the fucking cicadas and, you know, the... Uh, just, there's a lot of beauty in the whole thing, in the terrain, a lot of really dark, lonely beauty. Um, it's a really grim, desperate time. Uh, that, I mean, you know, that, that, that was huge, you know, on the impact of like, you know, what Mexico is today. So, and, and I don't, you know, I, I'm sure I've gotten something wrong in this review. The history is very complicated. It's complex. There's a lot of it. So this is really just cracking open this whole, you know, story. Things start out exciting. Ah, it's an adventure. Ideals, striving for a better world. But it's the same world. It's the same bullshit. I guess the political statement is solid. You know, it remains quite relevant. Certainly seems to be a precursor to events such as the Vietnam War. The madness of violence, it definitely has like a heart of darkness quality to it. But overall, and here's the thing, you know, like it sounds like I really like the book and, and parts of it I really do. But here's the thing, overall, it's just not the best writing. 
While the main crux, the main idea of the book is cool, I love it, and you have some occasionally beautiful writing, it just felt like the novel's agenda gets in the way of the story and the characters, if you know what I mean. Sometimes there are some good lines, some great lines, there's plenty of beautiful descriptions, but all of these shallow characters stand for things, you know? Obviously. Very obviously. They represent something. They represent some sort of concept or element, which just sort of takes away the reality for me. And the reality of that environment of, the, of all these people's stories was the interesting part. The violent realism of the Mexican Revolution and the existential confusion therein was what got me interested and excited in the first place. But something seems to be missing and I'm not sure what it is. It's, I don't know what it is exactly. Believability? Maybe? Like it's just a little too over the top to really have it hit? Like to really believe it and, and be emotionally affected or pulled in somehow? Yeah, I just always remained on the outside of this book and I don't know why. It's kind of just got this swashbuckling adventure thing, right? With all these gunfights followed by drinking and increasingly depraved acts. And while that's fine, it just almost never manages to go deeper. I say almost never because there are some attempts, but they just don't seem to have the necessary gravity. It just never quite gets there. Don't know. What do you think? I can certainly appreciate why Asuela wrote the book, and I think he's definitely achieved in getting his message across. Uh, and it's a fine book, but for me, it just wasn't quite as gripping and riveting as I wanted it to be, right? I never really felt it. And it just kind of came off as an adventure story with a bunch of, well, crooks, drunks, and losers. But they're not, they don't go far enough to be really interesting, right? They're not like Blood Meridian where you have like these characters who are just, there's, there's no pretense of being good whatsoever. There's nothing. They're soulless. They're monsters of humanity just, um, existing like it's like watching reptiles stalk the earth and murder their prey or, or like birds of prey you know like just uh animals that are just completely in their element and and never try or hope or want to be anything else whereas this is like yeah i mean look i really wanted it to be better than food i did I mean, look at the Immaculate cover. I mean, it's glorious. But for being the novel of the revolution, it just didn't have the ferocious clarity that I was searching for. It's just kind of a tired message. True, no doubt, true, but tired. Yeah, all revolutions inevitably deteriorate. Maybe it's just the fact that, I mean, it's old. That's an old book, it's over a hundred years old. Maybe it's just that the message is, is so common now. Uh, and we still don't seem to learn from it ever. Like Jacques Mallet Dupont said, like Saturn, all revolutions devour their children. And sure enough, after Huerta was overcome, there was a division within the four commanders responsible, like I said before, with Bia and Zapata on one side and Carranza and Obregón on the other. Ultimately, I believe everybody was killed except for Obregón. And then he was murdered too, eventually. But he was the last one standing. Again, there are great moments. Of course, I love the history and setting. I learned a bunch, which is great. Some great atmosphere and descriptions of the terrain. Everybody is living like it's their last day. It's got this romantic, savage excitement to it. Like, check this out. I love this description. Uh, page 74. This is after a battle when they're all bragging about their exploits to each other. They constantly interrupt each other, seizing the words from each other's mouths. And while they recount their adventures with macho fervor, women with olive-colored skin, bright eyes and ivory teeth, with revolvers at their waists, cartridge belts across their chests, and large palm-leaf sombreros on their heads, roam from one group to the other like street dogs. But yeah, overall, I just couldn't get over the sort of clunky narrative and superficial characters meant to be these politically conceptual representations. All respect to Asuela, while the message is true and profound, the book just felt thin. I always remained outside the story. It always felt two-dimensional. I think it's the writing style. Maybe first person would have served Asuela better, I don't know. So better than food? Nah, but certainly worth your time if you're interested at all in the Mexican Revolution, Mexican history and culture, and Pancho Villa. I'd say it probably beats the hell out of any textbook, though. There's a great film, uh, it's like a made-for-TV film, about Pancho Villa with Antonio Banderas, which I've linked to in the description below. I mean, you know, it's great, but you know, he, he gives a great performance. I thought he did a pretty damn good job. I like Banderas, I, I always have, I, ever since I saw him as, a, <laughs> as Zorro <laughs> when I was a kid, when I was really young, like 9 or 10. And did you know that Antonio Banderas was actually arrested in Franco, Spain? for performances he was involved in by uh, Bertolt Brecht. Crazy, man. I just, I love that story. It's such a random piece of information. Banderas is a badass. Coffee time. For those of you who are new, thank you so much for supporting the show. I take the names of the patrons on Patreon who have donated $5 or more per video. 
I place their names in this mason jar, and for every review I do, I pull out a name, and whoever wins is sent a hard copy of the book I'm reviewing, plus a bag of coffee roasted by yours truly. And the coffee is delicious. If you'd like to get in on that and help support the show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash books are better than food, or click on the link below and donate $5 or more per video. I sincerely appreciate it. For just $1 or more, you'll get access to the patron-only reviews, the Discord channel, and the Better Than Friday newsletter that I send out every Friday, which is just a list of five different things that I'm interested in at any given time. Could be books in the pipeline, music, changes week to week. If you think we have similar tastes, I think you'll really enjoy that. Unfortunately, international shipping is not included. Sorry about that. Thank you very much to all the patrons, and best of luck. Okay, here we go. Hayden. Hayden R. Thank you very much, Hayden. You're a longtime supporter. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're going to be sent a copy of Mariana Asuela's The Underdogs, plus a bag of delicious coffee, and I hope you love both. Cheers. All right, well, that's all I've got for you today. Please subscribe if you have not already, and hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this, and always remember, die reading. All right, take care of yourselves. Have a great night. Talk to you soon. Ciao.